it's a late game, but for sure you would like to see them iron out some of the mistakes that we have seen in the early T uh, game. But then again, you had subs come in, you had different players, new voices, different voices um, come in, and that's most likely what caused some of these issues. But for now, with Aatrox being up and available, that's of course what Loud is going to default to with Robo in that top lane. Yeah, Wunder going to feel pretty comfy with the counter pick knows it's coming. This is kind of a trade that's happened a lot. Haven't seen that much Caitlyn come through and upsets Caitlyn feels very scary. I love that. And there's so much versatility that they can do with this Caitlyn down in the bot lane in Europe. Um, they were the first one to bring out the Caitlyn Renata composition as well, where you could just hit your Q Renata. Offset doesn't have to hit the trap, just throw it down. And then Hilly Sang will drag it over yep. on that trap afterwards, which this is one of the lanes we've already seen EG bring out with at least with a Kate, uh, Caitlyn. You have to take control of the bot lane. This is your win condition in the early game where you get pressure, you get plating, and you start rotating an AD carry who's ahead of the gold around the map to win your trade. So it's quite pivotal that Fnatic gets the bot lane going now at least. Yeah, Sedwani also been very popular and banned quite a lot as well. So happy flex here for Fnatic to take, although expecting it for Wunder. I feel like this happens a lot. I mean, Sios is very good, don't get me wrong, but I feel like people are also just terrified of Humanoid Silas. Yeah, it's a good takeaway pick. And honestly, on three here as well, if you're not looking to secure your AD carry like Misfortune, Trunk would be a good shout as well, because no matter where that Sejuani is going to go, you would have at least the ultimate to take care of it. But he's going to handshake that, uh, well, assassin match of in the mid lane and say, you know what, I'll pick the Akali into your Silas. Take that one away from me. I got you another one. So I said Humanoid has been the player that has so far impressed me the most at Worlds here at Play It. The other player you threw out when we had this conversation was, of course, Zekka, yes. who's been incredible on Akali specifically. So kind of fun to now see one of the other champions de jour of the mid lane in the hands of one of the best performing players. Absolutely. I think for Humanoid as well, this is just showing a very different style in terms of champions you're able to bring out. The first champion was Victor, second was Silas. Now you're bringing out the Akali as well. We've even seen the LeBlanc too. So just such a big uh, ocean uh, coming through with the champions already. And every lane, as you saw from stats, if you're paying attention to the top of show, has been pretty ridiculous. So we'll see how it happens here. Lux still going to get banned away. Perhaps even that Renata that you highlighted also taken away, wanting to try to take the sting out of whatever healer song will play here. There's quite a few things you can go for. You can still go for the full send and then pick Leona as a takeaway on oh, four. I'm, so, I'm here for so that. They, yeah, for sure. So they don't get the misfortune with the Leona. It does leave the Amumu open. And I think that's really what they're looking for from the side of Loud. They want more team fighting tools. Right now, they have good damage, but they lack solid engage. And that solid engage will probably have to come from Seosh in that support position. Um, so let's see how it round out. Fiora though has been left open and Wonder is actually going to take that. This creates a very interesting dimension already from Fnatic because usually with the Caitlyn, you want to give her all the resources. But when you have a champion like Fiora as well, you don't mind giving her resources as well. And this can create points of attack from Lao at, Lao at least, where Fnatic won't be able to bandage all the positions they sometimes would have been able to if it had just been bottling the needle to prioritize. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot of power in the top side. It's also Sejuani plus two melees, even though Akali operates quite a bit differently. But still plenty of synergy here, and you have to think a pretty self-sufficient bot lane. The Amumu is here. This is what we expected. Of course, that's what Fnatic expected as well. Yeah, I think there's two things that Croc could look to go for here in terms of the team fighting they love. Either it's the Wukong, we see him default to it, yeah. although it's not as prominent as another not, not the junglers, it's comfort. And I think what really makes sense here is that Trundle as well, getting it into the Sejuani, taking away the resistance. But in terms of champions that has also made... Um, the tree! Exactly. The moment on the world stage so far, it is the tree and of course been very prominent in the jungle. You were, I think, the first... Uh, I love the tree. You were the tree uh, and first tree enjoyer of the broadcast. I, I mean, Maokai, ever since he was just playing in that top lane, he's so satisfying to watch. His attack speed when last hitting minions, it's superb. But also <laughs> just in terms of what he does for a team, he gives you so much intel just by throwing away saplings. You don't have to face check. You create zones where you don't have to be worried about flanks. And when you're playing into the likes of the team composition Fnatic has, where there could be a flanking Sejuani, could be a flanking Akali, well, these are great tools to have when you're facing up against them. Yeah, definitely a fun one here. I think, again, to your point, Lad have assembled pretty straightforward team fight. As we've seen, Maokai is very powerful if you get to kind of a stable mid to late game around objectives, as you mentioned, but also just in general team fighting. Getting there, of course, is going to be the problem with Wunder's Fiora and Humanoid Akali. Yeah, Fnatic's comp is a bit interesting to me because it's not usually what you would expect a Caitlyn to be in here, right? I think you could definitely have seen other things like the Tristana or Kai'Sa. Braum is picked up because it's a good response into Misfortune. You block away her ultimate. You can do the same with Maokai. To see what Fnatic bring to bear up against Lad, and they're already off to the races! We're just vibing in the mid brush here. Oh, they Run, my friend. Bomb. Yeah. Well, they didn't find anyone. Pack oh, it well. up. We'll take right. it where we're going home. Back we go. Back to the fountain. And on the other side of the map, 
no any aggressive intel has been garnered. Usually when you see so many people walking on the bot side, you want to move up to the top side, just a drop a ward potentially if you're allowed to do so. This time around, that's not going to be the case. Robo doesn't win level one, so as soon as he see Wonder, he, he kind of skadoodles out of there. Makes sense. Also wants to keep running, keeps his stack against the wall. Vital just barely missed by Wonder, and Robo is going to be just fine walking back home. The, I'm curious to see if Robo actually started either to try and see if he wanted to go over the wall and then accidentally did not connect with it over the wall. I may be wrong, but it just looked awkward him standing around just for a little second there. But both junglers will be starting on the top side. They will be making their way down to the bottom side of the map. For the side of Loud, you have playmaking potential. For the side of Fnatic, it makes sense. You have that Caitlyn and Wonder. We've seen a lot of top laners do this. You just kind of come around, see whatever poke damage you can get down, really get the intel as well. The yep. enemy jungler is starting here, and then, yeah, you're just done. Yeah, Maokai, okay. not the speediest of junglers, so pretty safe for Wonder just to walk in there. Also, there is a control ward right of mid, by the way. Humanoid actually got a ward kill off of it, so it has a tiny bit of XP, which could matter at level 2, but Akali early levels isn't that uh, impressive, let's say. So, curious to see if you've got that ward, but we'll see how much of a difference it makes in the early game here, especially tracking Razok and Croc in their early paths. Yeah, Wonder's decided to go for the grasp of the undying of Yora. Um, and so far, that's a really good decision when you're playing into the Aatrox matchup. Quite often, you'll see Kongra played as well, but it's way better into tanks because you'll actually have the time uh, to get that procced up. Whereas with grasp of the undying, you don't actually want to take too many extended trades with Aatrox in the early game. You just want to leave your Mitel and then kind of get out of there. Yeah, I haven't seen much of this matchup yet. Mostly actually because the Fiora players are eating bands in the first phase of Most draft. So, uh, we've talked at length about Aatrox and how he's so... Uh, easy to blind pick, so powerful, so generally strong in the meta. We've been kind of waiting, like, hey, what's the best Aatrox kind of pick? Probably Fiora, just doesn't get through that often. So Fnatic jumping at the opportunity here, and Wanda should be very comfortable in this early landing stage. Especially because he knows that the enemy jungler is pathing down towards that bot side, right? He got the intel from the get-go that he's going down, and that just allows you to play so much more aggressive. You don't have to get these early wards down if you're feeling it. He's done it anyway, because, you know, he doesn't want to risk a full clear blue side into a top lane gank. But now you can just crash the wave, you can recall, you can try and have Rast even further. And I love this three-way point too. of view. We don't get this in Europe, so this <laughs> is one of the few things that I'm like, man, get it, LEC. All right, well, there's Croc. Gonna go ahead and kill that control ward that was placed very early on. Gonna go take this crab as well, though Razok is in the area. Tank battle. I think I trust Sidwani. Oh, Croc's not having a good time at all. Also, oh, wow. Fnatic bot lane is moving. Has to smite the crab early. In a spot of bottle, crab goes down, but now Croc... Still low alongside Razok, but Hillisung also in trouble. Razok still taking damage. I think Loud have got it. They have! It's first blood over, but the donation's complete. Tin Enzo zooms in for a second, and the third could be on the table. Upset gonna get just that under his own turret. No, he'll barely live. Two for one in favor of Loud. They're starting out very aggressive, and it all comes from the two junglers just one we running each other. Love to see this from Loud. We already talked about the AR team that's reliant of getting ahead in that early game and picking up two kills already here from the get-go is super good, especially when it's down towards the bottom side of Fnatic. Yeah, a couple of assists, but Razok got one kill there as well for Fnatic as fight in the top lane, Robo with a nice chain. Wonder maybe going to have to go ahead and walk it off, although it does have a potion sticking, so should be okay. Interestingly, Loud only with a 500 gold lead, but they'll take it. Like you said, any early game is going to be good for them. And this is also how Humanoid has been playing the game so far in most of this series. He actually doesn't move whenever these skirmishes are coming around. This time around, he wasn't really allowed to either, but he prioritizes having the good laning phase. And now with the two junglers around that mid lane, Brock just allowing Tenones to get that crash in. Yeah, I think Humanoid hoping that the enemy jungler wasn't there. Uh, Croc is, so Tinon's going to be just fine here covering. To your point, though, Humanoid has been building big CS leads and is mostly playing a bit more selfishly in the lane. To his credit, he's played very well with he's the He's done well with button. the resources, yeah. yeah, for sure. So uh, I can't blame him too much there, but just going to go ahead and reverse this wave. Tinon's going to pull it just outside of turret range and be happy here in the melee versus melee matchup. Yep, so replay coming through once again. Initially, this looks really good for Rassol. Can we hold it for a second? You can see it in the picture in picture. They may be looking for a gank, but not having the intel. No, backing off. But yeah. It's the fact that we see first moves from the mid lane as well. It's the fact that you have that Maokai passive keeping you alive. And when you get that extra Sustain to play around with, that just means that Fnatic health bar, they're just going down. While from the side of Loud, they're kind of going up and uh, and that just allows them to go for these longer extended team fights, which is really not good for Fnatic. Yeah. Upset definitely a little lucky to get away. Tinoons couldn't quite find the chain on the stun. France did also burn his flash, so it could be something that Razzler could maybe look to exploit at a later date. But for now, things just settling down. Lad will take the early lead, but it's not all that much. Mid lane, no, could be problems. Great stun to set up. Humanoid, though, I think just in shroud range. 
and Razo key to cover again. You can see it. Humanoid should be having, hitting level 6 in a bit. Yeah, there he hits it, but does not connect with it. So what he tried to do there is that he wanted to fight uh, Tin Owens while the minion wave was there, get the OE, get the level 6 while Tin Owens is not expecting it. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. And props to Croc, who's really just been at the right time, at the right location every single time so far. Yeah, great coverage. Uh, for Croc, even going to hang out in mid lane, maybe pull the wave as Tin Owens doesn't have TP. Bottom side, we see no vision here as Hila Sang and Razog pairing up for a potential dive, but going to back away from that play. I just want to talk more about it. So far, this is a very successful early game for Lau. Oh, yeah. This is what we saw from them when they were playing the CP Law. This is why they're so difficult to play against. I know, wrote down in my notes that one of the things that makes Loud so good is the fact they're willing to be so aggressive. One of the worst things that haunts Loud is the fact that they're willing to be so yeah. aggressive. It, it, it's a double-edged sword that they have in their repertoire, but so far, it's what make them win so much in the CP Law that I'd love to see them continue with that playstyle as well, moving into play-ins, because there's no need for you to kind of change what makes you good. You might as well just continue with your own style and see how far that can get you. All right, well, Tinon's going to go ahead and scoop this wave up. Humanoid now level 7, so staying in mid even gets him a pretty decent XP advantage as well, being a level up. Robo also feeling comfier now in the later levels, despite Wunder still having that CS lead. Once again, a battle for the Crab. Razok in trouble, only level 5. Humanoid here, though. Stolen ulti out of Tinon's. Robo roaming down first. Razok just going to be left for dead. Very nice play out aloud. And it's just simple, right? They, they just have mid lane priority. They just have top lane priority. So they move in for the Kurt Crab. And really a little bit of a blunter from Rasog as well. Just not acknowledging and respecting the fact that his enemy has to move. Nicely done there. Loud once again, keeping the gold ahead. Not too far ahead again. Credit to the soul laners for keeping the CS high. Makes the gold lead much more manageable than it otherwise would have been if Loud were laning uh, a little bit better. But again, part of the reason they're even getting ahead is how well they're moving together. And we'll see if Fnatic can maybe dial back a little bit. Like you said, they've been a little bit loosey-goosey in the early games. And that's so interesting because it used to be one of the, you know, suits of Fnatic where you're like, the early game, that's the big strength. That's where you're looking. But so far, that hasn't really been the case. I think it's true for Humanoid. But outside of that, the rest of Fnatic has still really to find that form that they're so reminiscent of. Now, Rift Held has been spawned, but because that top skirmish went so well earlier, all of that control is just in the favor of Loud. So it wouldn't surprise me now that top lane crashes that you just see Croc move into that Rift Held and starting up. Yeah, gonna move down with Robo as well. Makes sense. Also, they know Humanoid's taking a reset, doesn't have TP either. So this is easy for Loud to walk over and go ahead and take. Window also pretty low, so can't really contest. Razok in the area, maybe thinking about it, but I think just gonna have to get the info. Now spotted on a sapling as well. This will be a very nice, simple Rift Tail take for Loud. Yeah, and even risking the steal isn't worth it. You die getting the Rift Tail, well, no one can pick it off from your team, and the enemy will just straight beeline it down to Drake. So you're just gonna have to respect the fact. Bartling gang, Bartling lane 2v2, Hillsong even with the unbreakable up is very breakable. Seos landing the bandage shot on top, but it's going to force the flash out of upset. There you have it. The loud bot lane showing up, and this is why they were so feared in their own regional qualifiers, or for playoffs rather, of course, since they won it. But Brands and Seosh, they've just been so potent, and seeing them once again on the Amumu and Misfortune, you don't have to make it hard. It's so easy to pull off, get the CC, get the ultimate, and lay that bullet time on top of it. Yeah, nice little ward as well from Seosh. Catches Razok moving in to try and cover for uh, upset if he was going to get dove. Unlikely to happen, but still like sales getting intel there and Razok at least trying to be in the area. Obviously too late because this play already happened. Yeah, and, I mean, all the way back to the drafting phase, Fnatic decided to go for a Caitlyn very early into the rotation. They saved last pick for their support. It ended up being this Braum, and you can see how it kind of works with the shield against the Misfortune Ultimate. It kind of spares upset a lot here when it finally comes out. Wait, wait for it. Oh, he's just CC'd through all of it, so there's actually none of, no, none of it getting blocked there. And it forces Opsets to get out of this situation afterwards with the Flash as well. So great stuff from Loud. And once again, a little bit of a wacky draft. <laughs> oh my lord! You gotta love it! Here's one I prepared earlier. Brands with a nice little flex on the bottom side, 2v2. Man, you gotta love that. I genuinely love I seeing personality love coming through as well. Especially from these guys. Tino right. is now aggressive in the mid lane. Modulus, hello. That yeah, hit that quite, quite nice. Ulti 2 ready. Gotta wear off the old plating. As Razok's here to cover as well. So no incoming dive, but still Tino and staying proactive in the lane. And it still does so much for them. Harold down in mid lane. You have the move under Drake afterwards. If that's what you're looking for, so many things going right for them. 
Top lane looks a little troublesome. I think Robo is going to be okay. Plates crash in mid. Gold over to Tinoons and Croc, which is always nice. And the Kraken Slayer is done for Brant. So after the races here for Loud, continuing to grow that gold lead. I mentioned it was about 500 before, but now over 1,000 is Robo. We're going to take that Wunder. You better flash. There Get is out of there. so many fires all over this Fnatic rosters right now. And now they're just excelling. We see it from the 2v2 in isolation. We see it from the 1v1 in isolation of top lane. These guys from Fnatic, they're just straight up getting gapped. No one's coming in here with the team play. This is just the raw skill showing from Loud contesting Fnatic. Yeah, we saw they got the Herald earlier. We've seen a lot of late dragons so far in Worlds, but this is a nice one to get your hands on. Easy for Loud to take here with the pressure that Bot and Mid already have. Humanoid is rotating down. Resox here as well, but Croc, the tanky tree with Flash, very unlikely to be a threat here. Good slow from Brant as well. Razo gonna try and get in there, but the ulti, just a whiff. They're out of hill or something. Yeah, you're forced to burn the flash from Brands, but in true. the big picture, you're super happy about the situation you still have from Loud here. You get the objective, got a few platings in the mid lane. You have so much pride in the work around with. Love this play here. Flash ult the Adorazo. Knows that Brands just burned the flash. Hillsung setting it up. He's two steps ahead. Sales with the watch there. Now the bullet time gonna turn it back around. Sales barely get away. Oh. Fnatic, but immediately Croc comes around, shot down their dreams, their homes, and ends up with a double kill for Brands with a double up on the Misfortune Q. Gotta be careful, Robo still fighting Wunder here as well. And Loud just continuing to get further ahead. Call it 2,000 gold ahead now, plus an Infernal Dragon to boot. Make those stats even better, even though it isn't reflected directly in the gold. And Brands, the young Brazilian superstar, set up for success in this game against Fnatic. Wakey, wakey, Fnatic. Loud, they're here to play. And uh, they've shown it so far as well. You can see it. Bot lane priority now with the 2v2 coming through. It allows Seosh to move around on the map, maybe to potentially influence the top side of the map. And they could do this freely. There's no objective to be taken on the bot side. Repost used. Wunder gonna get hit as well by the Q, but Seosh not able to find the angle. No ulti either, no flash from Amumu. The tricky to lock it down, but I love the roam. Again, just continuing to apply pressure. This is kind of what you were saying, right? Where Loud in some of their games, they haven't been able to freely move around the map as much as they did domestically. This game, however, lots of fluid movement here as everyone's helping each other lane. And the big thing for Fnatic, or the big thing that for Loud is, essentially is that Fnatic has no way of striking back. You don't have no bot lane priority to skirmish with. Mid lane is not able to have the first move. And with top lane being pushed in, shoved up with Wounded, this is a big wave. Just seeing Croc here while he's recalling might force him to back off it. All right, well, Overload here for Fnatic as well. Razok back down to the bottom lane. His upset's going to at least get one plate. Going to make it two, actually. 30 seconds until they dip away. So upset trying to mine as much gold as he can out of the turret. But still out of deficit here. You can see not quite a 1,000 gold ahead for Brands in the individual gold matchup. Finally forced to walk up a little bit. You can see Croc on the reset. Had to come down and assist his bot lane. But did allow Fnatic at least to get some control of the red side. Get a few jungle camps, but... Even then, spotting Rasok on the bot side, Robo is there to answer immediately. He takes away the red, red red buff on the top side. That's a show of force if I've ever seen one. Most certainly. And also Rift held up in 45 seconds. I have to think that's the next place Loud want to play. Loud just barely ahead as far as turret plates go, but those kills really boosting that gold nice and early here as Loud lining up for their next 5v5, which should be an absolute banger given how things have been going. Yeah, and you can see how this is actually going to threaten the rotations of Fnatic as well because Croc was on the bot side and bot lane was pushing in with Sheos and Brands. Hulisang still had to walk down towards the bot lane because Lao could technically speaking look for a, a, a gang and just come in with a dive. But that also now allows them to move up towards the top side afterwards because they had to push in. Now they get to come through with resets before Fnatic and they can get that first priority on Rift Hell. So it's just very fluid movements that we're seeing from Loud at the same time. Yeah, it seems like they've, you know, kind of, I mean, makes sense throughout a tournament like this, especially lots of practice, lots of footage to review. Loud is kind of potentially hitting a stride in this game. We'll see how the mid game continues, but so far so good. The Herald's now up. Vision looking good as well as Brance is going to go ahead and clean out this wave. Okay, so this is definitely a window that was missed from inside of Loud because has they moved off to Rift Herald initially, they would definitely just been able to take it before the rest of Fnatic got there. They expected a counter dive themselves, and because of that, put resources on the bot side, which now allows Fnatic to get freely out of the map. So I definitely think this was a little bit of a window that was missed, but now you might try to just contest them on the two versus three on the bot side for that initial play that Fnatic was so scared of. Yeah, now you know Razak was here. Humanoid, deep TP, he's been unleashed. Going for it now, is Hilly gonna try and lock up Brands? That's a great target to get. Shuriken flip lands. That's oh no, why you get an aid. 
but you give the shutdown over to Hillisang. You have a Caitlyn who wants the goal, you have the Akali who wants to get ahead of the curve. And unfortunately, in a three versus one, Hillisang picks up that kill. Also, Harold gonna go over to Razork as well. Fnatic gonna win both sides of the rift off the back of Humanoids TP. Window fighting Robo TP coming in. They've actually given up the objective now that it's gonna fight. Razork getting knocked up there, but here comes Tinoids. Steals the ulti, sails around the back. There we go, Curse of the Sad Mummy is popped and Robo's gonna get the kill. Razork gonna flash after. Tinoids already popped the Sedge ulti, hijacked as well, but here's Tinoids once again to lock him up for the second man. And said Wani might be tanky, but it's not enough for Robo. And that is that first move from Sheosh on the Amumu as well. They spot them on the bot side. They say, you know what? We get man advantage on top side. Wunder gets aggressive together with Rasok. Problem is, they've already committed their play on bot side. League of Legends, essentially, it's a turn-based game. You already used your turn. You can't use the next play while it's loud who has to move on top. And I'll uh, we'll see what happens to the Herald. Currently still in the neutral zone. Looks like Dragon, the next port of call here for loud. Upset of note did also get the first tower of the game off, off the back of the bottom side play. So extra gold for the Caitlyn, which is good news for Fnatic. But Loud still feeling comfy, still have that gold lead they've been sitting on for most of this early game. Going to get their second dragon as well. And we'll, we'll imagine teams are going to flip and reset for this Herald. Yeah, potentially. But there also is just a window now for Fnatic to say, OK, at least we can get objective finally. Because when this Drake goes down, they already have their AD or their top laner on the bot side. TP is almost up for him, so I expect with the push in top side, yes, Fnatic, you see it here. They are just starting off with the Rift Hell. They should get this for themselves. Right, no TPs left. Robo gonna have to play carefully here. Very much on the weak side right now. Waves building in a decent spot. Humanoid's gonna start harassing. Sayos here to cover, which you love to see. But they know the Herald's taken now. I sit the hole over the top. Robo just getting harassed from everywhere. But there's no wave left, and Robo's getting damage done. Anyone else coming? No, it's just defensive play here. But they bounce the ulti. Very slick feet there out of Robo. That's my Hillisang right there. He does not care about that turret. He's going under it, and he's getting out alive. Did not even have any flash foot. So close to be a situation where he just straights off runs it under tower, but gets out alive. Now with resets on top side, maybe potential forget that mid lane off loud but we see it here on the top side it's Matic getting aggressive with Wunder and Rasog and if it's a two versus one against Robo yeah sure that makes sense but the real MVP of this play well that is Sheos on the Amumu finding the Fiora into the curse of the Sad Mommy and it's just done and dusted afterwards nicely done Razok flashes flash follow and an easy clean up here as Silas runs around the backside we'll get there eventually Whee! the nose yep there we have it Robo collecting all the gold as well Feeling pretty jungle good. Gap as well. It's the only bot gap we got on the arms. Top gap, bot gap. Oh, and you can you can see it there. That's very gifable. Yep. <laughs> have to have that one again. Robo in trouble. Humanoid always the menace in the side lane. Plus 600 for the man. And you need a man to show us up. And we talked about him. He comes in. Greatest showman alive. Humanoid in the mid lane. On the Akali, finally picking up that shutdown. And it, it gives them some breathing room, but they certainly need more of that. Hilly, getting uh, CC'd up by Seos. There's Curse of the Sad Mummy, knows the rest of the team's here. Flash W there for Croc, ulti out as well. Upset though, firing away, but it's kind of a pea shooter at this point. There's enough damage there. As Croc in trouble, still alive. Malcolm, man, he cannot be killed. He's too tanky, but not tanky enough as Seos slashes out. Brant's out of there as well, lets the bullet time rip, but Wounded dashes out of the way. Now Tin owns. Hijacks for Sejuani, or perhaps as a follow-up, but it doesn't look like it. One for one support for Jungler, but it gets a bit messy in the mid-game, and we've talked about that a lot. This is where, as fans of Loud, we want to see them con contain the pressure that Fnatic has. These minor regions, when they're playing against the major regions, the biggest weakness every time has been the fact that the macro in the mid to late game is faltering, and they throw away some of the games. But in the top side, Humanoid just sees Robo, and he just instantly recognizes that's a kill. Robo does not have any of the kit right now, and he just shreds through him. Easy shot down for Humanoid to pick up. And this one here, Killy, over award, trying to clear it. Alongside Razor, but where did Razor go? Ah, went home. Had that empowered recall with the Rift, all across the yeah. Yeah, just to throws it in there. He's expecting a reset to come through from Hillisang. You can see him with the Glacial and with the two charges on the queue, he's able to contain him there for so long. But what's really crucial as well is that last Winter's Bite on Croc, allowing Upset to get the stun into the trap, into the kill, which Humanoid finally having a move from the top lane. Yeah, Wonder also TP'd in for that play, but blew a couple flashes on the back end of it. So worth in the end. Power's still not taken for Lao, but they've got a couple weak in bot mid and top, actually, to try and farm some money out of. Wonder in trouble. 
Needs to be careful here. Humanite does have that teleport, but I think he should just forfeit this objective. At least this is good butt pressure from the side of Loud, but in the mid lane, Fnatic come through with a response. Brands in trouble, flashed on there by Razo, but now kiting out of the way. Should be okay, now gonna get stunned by the set, but there's no follow-up there. Brands already low, just the Razo in the 1v1. Brands gonna go down, no, he's gonna take out the enemy jungler instead. Has to get out, hiding in the ocean brush with the rest of the team's gonna reinforce. Wonder in there though, Humanite driving in, but Brands gets the kill! Loud have turned it back around! in the second tier turret! Who cares? What happened in the fight? <laughs> Four members ends up going down for Fnatic. Baron is up and available. And now they're just gonna prance right over there. Brands to lead the charge. Five members still standing. There's two hyphy. We broke the overlay, it'll be back to worry about it, but Loud back on Baron after taking four, losing one, perhaps none, we'll have to find out later, because Loud rocketing ahead in this mid game. And this is so good for timing as well, you can pick up the Baron, you can get research through instantly, you have a Drake that's spawning in less than one minute, 30 seconds to be precise, you can try to set up some fights for that, should this setup be there. Great team fight there for Loud, you set up burden of execution, fairly straightforward, but Brantz living on a pixel. In that play, as we return things back to normal, 4,000 gold in change on the Rebel Baron Pal play. And I mean, huge credit to Seosh as well, right? We, we said that you have to contain Humanoid in these fights, and that's not only in the laning phase, that's also him in a team fight, because that's where he's really been able to leave his mark as well with the gold leads he's acquired. But this time around, he shot him down immediately, found the Q, found the Curse of the Sat Mummy, and Branch just equalized on that immediately, taking him down. So great stop from the side of Lau, finally taking down tier, that tier to one in the mid lane. They have to set up for the Drake, but they're gonna continue on with the push. Yeah, remember when I said they didn't have any towers? That's actually kind of a good thing now, because this Baron's gonna make it very easy to take out these objectives. The, the amount of gold they're gonna have off the back of this Baron, assuming nothing goes pear-shaped, is going to be very impressive, but they'll fall back to Dragon, put themselves on Soul Point, Ocean Soul nonetheless. Fnatic just trying to split and buy time. You can see Humanoid in the top lane. He's just going to vibe because there's not much else to do right now. Yeah, and it's looking so good for Loud in terms of taking over the map. Yeah, they give over a tier 2 turret potentially to Humanoid. I don't think he's in a position to actually take it. They've been smart about it. They've put Robo back. Now, okay. the question is, how much are they are going to overextend their welcome here? How, how long do they want to make a play before they commit to reset? So far, they're still feeling themselves. They have ultimates on the Maokai. They have ultimates on the Amumu. If they want to threaten a dive or potential siege here, siege here, they can still commit to it. Yeah, no TP either for Humanoid, who does walk back, but Robo does have his and still Baron, and the top out of turret still up, so... Bit of easy money to take there on the top side for Loud. They are going to be patient in their siege. You know Fnatic are looking for an angle. Continues with the Baron buff. Robo as well on the top side. Finally able to take care of some of these turrets you were addressing earlier. Fnatic though, have a move if they want to look for it. They find an upset. Ulti stolen by Tino and let it rip there again. Maokai covering there, but now they're counter engaged. Humanoid the problem, but he's gonna get taken down. The peel is perfect, that allowed. And here comes Robo joining in for the 5v4. They just continue with this high pressure gameplay from the side of Loud. Robo still fancying himself. The move. All right, we're just getting in there. Brant's little low doesn't really want to stick around for the extended fight, but the rest of the squad wants it. Tino straight into the backline onto upset. Robo took out Wonder. Now they're doing it, man. Croc is low, but he is not out, and this might be an ace on the table out of the Brazilians. Crowd's going insane, and they should be. Fnatic are getting absolutely kaboom by Loud right here, and they're going to continue with the Baron buff on the bot side. Death time still fairly low. We are 24 minutes into the game, but they're going to continue the siege on at least the inhibitor. This is a very nice Baron power play, breaking the bottom in hip right as time runs out. Three minutes to the soul is up. There is not much left in this game as far as Loud's concerned. And it was Tin Owens back in the day that this this against the Lions. Back on the infamous Camus, Kaboom Ross, and he's continuing the trend at internationals for Brazil to be a thorn in the side of Europe. And my God, you have to commend so many of the members of Loud because sure thing, it's a team effort. Great team fighting coming through. But already from the laning phase, they've been able to completely hand their Fnatic. We saw it from the top side, we saw it from the bot side. And let's have a look at this play once again. Again, just containing Humanoid, being so patient here. Exactly. 
starts up well. They get a pick on Opset, and it actually looks a bit disastrous because they're throwing so much into Hillisang, just tanking all of it off. But once again, it's Humanoid diving in there and just getting completely picked apart by all the CC that you have. There is so much lockdown. Despite there even being a trial out route, it's just not going to be enough. And the big one here is Robo, who just still fancies himself, sees so much. Seosh initially gets a bit too much in there, but it sets up the rest of his team to just continue with the team fight and pile it all down. I would love to hear the comms for this particular oh, yes. time. I bet it was extremely uh, decibel breaking. And surely uh, able to be shown on broadcast with no swear words whatsoever. <laughs> no review or censorship required. That's about what I expected, actually. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, just yell at them, give it to them, you know? Yeah, show it all. Give me the raw emotion as well. It's the thing I really miss in esports. You know, I really want people, whenever you get that solo kill, to just let them know. Get the mental edge as well. Humanoid finding an in-game edge here. Day, as well, it's week. Hello, Robo. Casually 1v1ing Humanoid there in mid lane. 6 1 and 2 on the very large Aatrox. Also has a stopwatch still unbroken. So plenty of playmaking to be had. A dragon in a minute 25, if they even need it. They didn't all fight up quickly. Stopped as well by the unbreakable shield there. But now they continue with the map pressure. And it's not just the map pressure that Fnatic has to be worried about. It's the fact that they don't have access to Drake right now. It's, it's such a long walk for them. With still one minute to go, Loud can just look to reset. They can look to get aggressive with the bot side vision. The only thing that's going to be interesting now is how do they approach the fact that both Baron and Dragon is going to be on the map on the same at the same time? Because that throws an extra variable in, and this is where the macro will have to come in play by Loud. And that's a great point, because again, we highlighted it. The mid game has been where we feel like Loud in particular have faulted in some of their earlier games. They certainly could have been 2-0, perhaps 3-0. But I, I, I'll just say it right now. There is n absolutely no way that Loud should be throwing this away. They've Agree. been completely manhandling Fnatic and they should be able to continue with the amount of pressure they've forced on them so far. And that's the impressive part, because this game, they've done it all correct, it feels like. They had their early game, they've continued to extend it in the mid game. They have been just right, let's say, in continuing to apply pressure and find fights. Even now, Robo, the solo zoning them away. 15 seconds to kill. Might as well push the waves as far up as you can, and then fall back to the easy soul. Kumino trying to make the play in mid. Again, Robo has the stopwatch. I said it earlier. Kumino just straight up losing again in the 1v1. His tin owns, but now trouble again. But Aatrox, so much healing. Kumino in a status, but he's just going to be killed. Make it two for loud. Easy as you please. It is pure desperation for Fnatic. And now they're just picking up freebies on the map with Fnatic running into them loud, accepting it with open arms. And now five members still standing, three members of Fnatic. This should be the beginning of the end. We're going for the end. We don't even need it. The Ocean Soul, man. We've got a super down in bottom side. We're breaking mid. We're ignoring the in -hip. We're going for a 5v3. Fnatic gonna finally be handed a loss as loud. Looking so good here to open up day three. Still needs a little bit more work, but again, the damage should be done. The wall of dip is there, and the crowd goes wild. Loud. Take that fanatic! Take it in! Take it in, boys! Loud! Founding themselves in a very good position in this group, suddenly sitting at a 2-2. Two and two. And what a way to do it! What a team to do it against! As well, taking into the context of how dominant Fnatic was on the first two days. Loud now, removing that page from Fnatic's book. What are the two things we said? Clean up your mid game. Contain humanoid. They what did Loud do? They had it all. They understood the assignment and much more. That is A plus grades coming through from all of them. And it's just not one member stepping up from Loud. It's all of them. And it's just beautiful League of Legends. One of the most impressive Amumu support games I've seen. There we go again. Fresh Fresh game. Game. Oh, get it permanently in grade. Hey, now there's a move. I can get behind. Let him know forever.